So it's always the nights that you plan and you expect and you look forward to and you actually prep for. I, If you know me, I don't usually prep. I, I try to, I want to, but usually it's always last minute. I gotta charge the batteries on the boat. I gotta charge the camera batteries. I'm always running behind. So last night I was like, I'm gonna go fishing tonight. And of course, we got thunderstorms. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm a little bit of a, if you, if you ever go fishing with me, I'm the one that's like the last to leave. Um, I always want to catch a fish. It's, I love I love cat fishing. So um, sometimes I don't know when to, to stop. So <laughs> I'm still going to go. Um, there's supposed to be a wave, a real quick wave of thunderstorms come through. And then after that, it's a little bit spotty. So they don't, um, there's a huge, huge thunderstorm coming through, but they don't know if it's going to miss us or not. So um, that will be up in the air. But... I haven't been fishing in over a month. I've, I, well, actually, I went out with my wife. Uh, we didn't catch anything though. But I've been busy, if you, as you see, with a messy garage. Started a little lawn and landscape company. Um, it's been, well, it's been what's, what's taken my time mainly. Um, just this last month, just making sure I have all the equipment. Um, of course, any kind of repairs, things like that, um, takes time. And sometimes you just, uh, I mean, I've been getting home at eight or nine o'clock at night, just kind of exhausted. Been really busy, it's been going good. But I'm ready to start cat fishing and making videos again, guys. So I'm excited. Um, again, like I said, I got I was able to catch over 45 bait fish tonight. I got three shad, one's still alive here in the tank, a massive one. Uh, if he's living in the tank, I'm gonna let him live there if I ever wanna use him live. But um, I got two that died. So I got some two, fairly about 10 to 12 inch uh, shad I'm gonna use tonight uh, along with uh, live, some live bait. And I, I hope the rain doesn't come because I wanna have a good solid night. The wind's only supposed to be like five to six miles an hour from the south, so. Um, like I said, I got, well, I unplugged it, but I had every battery. I actually have, actually, that's a really bright light. So, whoa, whoa, changing colors. So I actually on this boat have three batteries. Um, I don't really need that for this boat. Um, but I do have to run the spotlights that I have. Um, I use that and... And also, I, I kind of actually just keep the spare on here, especially when I'm by myself. I'm not really worried about weight, so I need to lose some weight, but I'm not worried about the weight on the boat. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get loaded up, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hope for the best, and I'm gonna bring a jacket that uh, is waterproof. So wish me luck. All right, <clears throat> guys, it is, it's been a crazy month for me. And as you see, <laughs> ignore the kind of the mess I've got going on in here. Um, started a company, started doing land, uh, lawn and landscape. So I started doing lawn, landscape, um, working for myself. And so I haven't really been able to get out on the water as much as I wanted to. I haven't been able to get out on the water very much at all actually so it's been it's been over a month since i've been able to get out and go fishing just trying to figure out my new business and everything that i started um getting that situated but um as you can see you know i didn't even get my pulse put up on the rack last time i've been working on this this weekend um i was able to go out today and get some fish now there's a massive there's a massive shad in here. Now, I didn't think he was gonna make it, but here he is right here. If you, if you can see him, he's just massive. So I'm gonna let the, that one live in there. I also caught two other shad and about 45 bait fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and, yep. I don't like it right so, now. I don't <laughs> right, tonight, I'm gonna use some of these guys. 
Oh, Luke. Ah. Oh. Where'd it go? Okay, I'm gonna get some more. Eat. That was a smart one. He was like still, and then out of nowhere, just. Woo. Oh wow. Woo. Oh, Give me wet. Guys. Hey, come here, guys. Look at the size of that crappie. Uh. He's going back in. Got another crappie. Can you see him? These guys, I'm gonna let them grow a little bit. Hey, you too. Yep. They'll get you. They'll get you. Did he get you? I want all the fish. Let me get them back in the mouth. They're looting me right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll put them back in the mouth. I've got, of course, crappie. Whoa. Again, the crappie again. Exactly. All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this out. So there's gonna be bait tonight. Got some crappie. Looks like I got a lot of crappie. Um, hmm. The green sunfish. Green sunfish. You guys, I'm. Look at that filter sock. This side over here is completely, it's completely clogged up. Look at this. Look how nasty that is. So, they actually work. Some of Get it on there nice and tight. Do a regular, regular shoe knock. What do you call it? This, this one's being fed from the bottom. We got some nasty stuff on that. Ooh! <laughs> I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking clearly right now. But that one's. So this one's coming from the bottom. This is one. It's coming from. The one I just put on is coming from the top here. So, filter socks, I always flip them inside out whenever I wash them. Just because they're nasty. So I'm gonna flip it back the way it should go. And the way they come is where you'll see like the actual stitching should be the outside. Which I, for the longest time, I thought that was wrong with, uh, it actually it makes sense how you pull on these. So I'm gonna shove this hose back in here. Just gonna tighten it up a little bit. I'm just gonna tie it to this one right here. So if you guys have a bait tank, um, these filter socks work really great. Ooh. I don't know how that's making me sweat. <laughs> how I'm sweating over changing a filter stock, but. I'm procrastinating this thunderstorm fishing trip. I want, I want it to storm first before I start getting in the water, so. And make sure this is tight. Okay. All right, I can still leave. So I got the boat loaded. Got my bait, poles, guys. It's already, if you can see, <laughs> it's already rained. It just got done raining. I haven't even left the house yet, but uh, a little thunderstorm just came through here. Um, but yeah, I got everything and I'm missing the keys to my boat. So I'm, I'll find those. I usually do, but I'm, I'm, I'm bad. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm looking at though on radar here now it's usually accurate but sometimes it'll say it's a lot worse than than what it what it really is but this right here if you can see
kind of between those arrows is where I'm going to be at. So it looks like there's an opening there. But there could also... I mean, there's something could also pop up too. Or it could just be raining consistently and it not be on the radar. So um, I'm going to go out there. I got my, my jacket on, so I'm good this time. I'm not going to be soaking wet. And uh, I really just want to catch a big fish tonight if I can. So I'm going to get out there and I'm going to go find my key. All right. All right. Um, so I just pulled up to the boat ramp here. Got the boat ready to go in. And this is what happens a lot of times when the water comes way up and then it goes down and then it's wet now. So you got all this. Now it looks like, at least it looks like there's a path that people have come in and out. But look how thick this, that's, that's some really, really slick mud to get out of. So this goes all the way down there. So I'm, I'm, I gotta get all the way down there and then all the way back out by myself, on my own. I can do it. I've done it before, uh, way worse than this. I actually had a snow shovel with me. I sh shoveled the actual uh, boat ramp off. So uh, I um, just looked at the radar again. It looks like it's gonna rain here consistently for the other maybe two hours but i think it's gonna be light like this so that doesn't really bug me at all um everything else i have important is in plastic bags so we're good to go guys i just got on the river just got on the river um this is the fastest i've ever seen this part of the river um it's actually moving usually it's not moving very fast at all but it's moving today but uh the boat didn't start like immediately and i looked back and i was like 50 yards from the from the the launch so yeah it's it's high and it's moving good the good thing is i don't see any trees um i don't know how much you guys see i i can't i don't really see any trees or major logs i gotta be worried about a lot of times after a large, you know, a lot of water has come down, raised the river up, all that loose debris will come floating down the river and just go, it cause, causes havoc. Havoc, causes, it's just kind of annoying and can also probably uh, kill you, hurt your boat, that type of stuff. So we're good to go. It's not raining right now. I should take this jacket off because I'm hot. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna get set up at the spot. I got a couple of, I got some cut shad I'm gonna put on, some live bait I'm gonna put on. I'm excited. Even if it starts raining a little bit more, I think it's almost clear for the rest of the night. So, it's and also it's about 1.30 in the morning. Ugh. Glad I became my own boss, right? I just ramped the boat up right on this, uh, this island here pretty high and um, yeah, instead of anchoring or doing anything like that, it's gonna keep me right in this spot here. So um, that's kind of what I like. That's what I like. So um, yeah, it's gonna keep me right in the spot. Only thing is, <clears throat> with the possible rain, if it if it raises, um, I might actually float off of this island. Or if it lowers and I see the back of the boat, uh, you know, start to. If I see the back of the boat start to tilt a little bit more which has happened before. Yeah, I was fishing once, completely didn't even think about it, ramped up onto an island, and then the water had dropped so much where it was almost impossible to get my boat off. So um, I'm gonna watch that, and if that's happening, I'll probably back off a little bit, push off a little bit, uh, re readjust. But like I said, we are up here. This is like what I said, we are up here, ramped up, on this muddy muddy island and we got a creek right next to us right out here and we got the main channel of kansas river there's the dam right over there so all right i'm gonna get some baits on for us right now i got some i got a shad head these are fresh just caught these a few hours ago 
and uh, I'm gonna put some ahead, side, and i um, gonna probably pick, yeah, that guy. I'm gonna go with that guy. So try a live and a couple of cut, and that's how we're gonna determine what we're gonna use for us tonight. All right, here is that shad side, gives us shad side. Um, got it kind of hooked at that diagonal, uh, you know, kind of, so it doesn't rehook itself, but that's a pretty good size. I just, uh, I didn't cut it into twos. I just made it one kind of whole belly piece. So I'll uh, see what we can get with this. All right, here's one of the live baits that are gonna go on. Um, he's looking pretty lively. So we're gonna see if we got a flathead well, or blue. I'm gonna go a little, little towards like the creek entrance with this guy. All right. Too hot for a jacket right now, and this little sprinkle isn't doing anything. Guys, I'm sorry about just having this one angle uh, for this video. Uh, my other camera, something's going on with it. it it's, it's killing batteries really fast, so I need to get another uh, another GoPro or a different camera. So for right now, you got this one view of me. So um, I do like to have, have to have multiple views, and I, I think it looks a lot better on on uh, YouTube and on video. But uh, yeah, that's why. There it goes, guys. He put up a good fight. I'm not sure why my phone's going. It's almost four o'clock. So something's been playing. Someone's been playing with my live bait out there. I'm not sure if this is the guy or not. But, yeah. I'm not sure if this is him or not. But he put up a... He did not want to come in. This is... A, whew, 
it's been over a month since I oh actually this whole year this whole season I haven't been able to get out and this is the first flathead of the year so you can't you can't start off better than that that's insane I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna get a weight on them get some pictures I'm gonna get a weight on them see if I can go ahead and but okay so let's get a weight <laughs> Let's go ahead and get it wait real quick. And then I'm gonna let him back in the water. CPR baby. Says 27 pounds. He felt bigger than that. Let me try and reset it, but if, if anything, it's 27 pounds. You always go with what your scale says, not what your not what your eyes think it is. I just feel like somebody out there needed to hear that. Yep, 27 pounds. There it goes. Woo! All right, 27 pounds. And all of a sudden it was worth staying out late, getting in the rain. I'm gonna go put another live, livey on. Make sure I'm not getting any other hits, but all right. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and release this guy. He's gone. It's, it's been a few hours, obviously you can tell. Everything's a little bit brighter out, so. Um, it's been a couple hours since that last catch and um, getting a little bit of play on this left pole over here just trying to milk it for another uh, flathead or blue right now before I leave I don't really want to pack up I got real stoked off catching that one and I really wanted to catch another one so I'm gonna try and see if I can catch one and then uh, I might head out this kind of gives you a little better idea of uh, the area I'm fishing in right here. Um, so there's actually right there underneath the uh, bridge, there's those there's a, those pylons. There's a huge log jam over there. I think the next time I come out here, I'm gonna go check that out because uh, like the flathead love that. All right, so I got some work to do today. I've been here long, way longer than I should have been, but um, there's a log jam up underneath these pylons, underneath this bridge. It's calling my name, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try it out for like 10 or 15 minutes, I think, maybe more. All right, so the, there's this massive log jam up here under the bridge. And the current usually isn't this quick at all, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's like, it's a ton, it's a ton of trees. Um, when the water was a lot calmer, it's, it was a lot safer, I think, to mess with. Um, Show you what I'm talking about here. And you can just see the you can see there's a lot of buried a lot of buried trees underneath underneath this right here too. So this is a little bit different than I remember it. slow down a little bit just because I have to turn around because if you look up here it looks like there is some because the water's so high this actually used to be all blocked off 
The water's so high right now, this used to be blocked off by all of this wood. But, now that it is like it is, I don't know what's underneath me. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind trying over here. I just don't want to get pinned up against, you know. There's, it looks like there's a spot right in there I could almost get my boat. But getting, getting out of there might suck. See, I'm in drive and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, just massive, massive trees. Um, I'm trying to think of what to do. Because I know when I kill the engine, I'm gonna float down here somewhere. And I don't wanna be in front of it either. I don't know, I might be able to tie right over here. Again, I don't know what I'm underneath or what's underneath me, but there's, or which part of this might just break away, you know? So, I might just try something real quick. Yeah, guys, there's not really a safe place to be over here, so. I thought I'd try it out, but I gotta get to work. I gotta get home, so. But this is the fastest, this is the fastest I've ever seen the Kansas River move. This is pretty quick. In, the, in this area right here, it is, this is fast. So, I think I'm done for the, the night, the day. I, I think I'm done for the day. I got one. First flathead of the year is 25, 27 pounds. Not terrible, so. Alright. <laughs> Alright guys, I probably look... I feel terrible. I, I feel worn out. Um, right after I left the log jam, I was I was going up the river against the current. I was I wasn't getting very far, um, but I could tell. I mean, the current was strong. I mean, I need a bigger mo motor on this boat anyway. But I could tell I was I was I was I was getting places, but not very fast. But I heard the engine make this weird noise, so I I was I grabbed the ga a gallon of gas real quick and just shoved you know shoved it in there while the boat was was, was moving forward and, and uh whew, huh. i can't even i'm out of breath i'm out of breath so i heard the engine making a little bit of noise after i left that wood pile and it kind of sounded like it was it was cutting out for a second so i i ran as fast as i could because i didn't want i didn't want to flow back into that wood pile and there's also a dam right there that you, that the water's so high right now that you can just go right over it. So, um, I put a whole gallon of gas in my engine. And it's not a very, it's not really that far from the boat ramp. And I'm just chugging right back up to the boat ramp. I can almost see it. And the engine just cuts out. And I got this, this trolling motor. 45 pound thrust it it does absolutely nothing it gets me it, it gets me through little creeks like this okay but um man that was an experience i like i couldn't get the trolling motor to work for a little bit so that, that's why i have all these batteries you know is because of things like this well just check your gas i'm i'm stupid for doing that i mean i <laughs> You don't realize how like it was it was scary and then all of a sudden uh i started backing into like trees and i was in the middle of the river i wasn't on the side 
So I, I, I could, I tried to pump a little bit of gas, as much bit of gas as I could, like fumes. I tried to pump some fumes into the into the motor. I got a little bit of fumes and I just jetted it straight to the one of the sides, and I kind of held on right there. And I got the trolling motor to work, and I got it going at a hundred. And I'm looking, and we're not we're not going anywhere. So um, there happens to be this creek, and we actually this is one of the. The first reason we we dropped in at this boat ramp was we actually wanted to fish this creek, the mouth of it and stuff like that. It's actually kind of closer to the boat ramp too. So, um, good thing this creek was here because I, I went under a tree, almost lost some poles. I mean, it was crazy. And I, I got the trolling motor to kind of steer me towards the creek here. And I got into this creek and I can kind of hear, I can kind of hear a company like back, like there's a company back there. I think it's fast and all or something like that but this is like I, I was like i had a gas can i was like somebody's got to have gas you know because i mean otherwise the gas station is about a mile and a half away but i was about to do it sorry this is a long it was a long story this is a long it was a bad experience but uh always check your gas tank <laughs> check it often uh there's no reason not to um so if you can kind of look at the look at this this woods uh this this i mean might not look that bad of course right here is not bad at all but when you get up a little bit closer to where there's a fence it's about six feet tall and it's six feet tall like it was this tall and it was muddy at the same time because it rained last night and there was holes so i was like falling in holes um i don't even want to touch my face right now or go to the bathroom or do anything before i like wash my hands because I, I know i walked through some poison ivy but um i just sat there at the fence with a gas can some guy was mowing and i was like hey he's like oh we don't have any i'm like of course he probably doesn't think i have a boat down here he probably thinks like some weird guy from the woods has a gas can you know what i mean like i'm a homeless guy like looking for gas for some reason start my fire i have no clue i want to scratch my face so bad so i hop the fence grab the gas can start walking I'm, and i start to think you know what i just started the my lawn and landscape company and i keep gas cans in my car so that's what i went and, and picked that up thanks to a sheriff here in edwardsville or a police officer here in edwardsville i saw me walking on the side because it was still a walk quite a walk to the boat ramp from here so I'm walking on the side gravel road for a few minutes and then a cop passes by me and I'm like, come on, he's got to pass by again. You know, why is this guy walking down the road with a gas can and there's no car anywhere. And the gas station was the opposite direction because I was walking to the boat ramp. So he gave me a ride to the boat ramp. I picked up my gas can and then he gave me a ride back here. And I think I fell like maybe twice with the gas can in these holes he mass i mean it, it it literally is like a jungle in here like it is it is insane i mean it might not be a bad place to fish um you know lift the motor up it well of course it's also really really high right now so um yeah that's that's a lesson right there always check your gas tank i thought i had filled it up enough and then i brought an extra gallon and i i'm only going like it's like a 10 minute ride to where we go so but now i know that that engine i need a new engine too that that engine's not powerful enough for this river well when it's high like this and also also it eats gas like crazy i can't believe i couldn't make it from the spot i was at to the boat ramp with a whole gallon of gas of course now it's almost like five dollars a gallon so uh this is a six minutes of explaining pure hell I just went through. There's no, there's no feeling like running out of gas or some sort of like mechanical failure like with your with your motor. Um, if you if hey if you have some of those stories in the comments, like let me let me know. I'd like to you know. And you're obviously still alive, so I'm glad that you can tell that story. But um, it sucks because you don't. Who do you call? Everybody's at home. My, <laughs> You know, my wife can't be like, oh, let me get my jet ski and I'll come out there with a thing of gas. It doesn't happen. So, uh, 
they'd probably have to helicopter or something. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so, I'm like my shoes, my pants, and I probably look like, I probably look terrible. So, at least I have marine oil mix on the boat. I brought two gallons. I'm about to get the heck out of here and out of this creek. But always check your gas tank. And uh, I should have done that. I feel stupid. I almost didn't share this because it was so embarrassing. And I'm now like, I was already running behind. Now that took like an extra hour, which it could have taken longer. But that took like an extra hour at least. Now I gotta go load my boat onto a ramp that's full of mud, which is gonna be a piece of cake after what I just did. So I'm excited for that. All right guys, peace out.